All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I call to order the Clackamas County Board of Commissioners Business Meeting this January 8th, 2015. I'll ask our County Administrator, Mr. Krupp, to take the roll. Well, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, we are joined this morning by uh, Stephen Madcore, County Council, and Mary Rathke, our Clerk to the Board. I'll start with the roll. Uh, Commissioner Bernard. Here. Commissioner Smith. Here. Commissioner Savitz. Here. Commissioner Schrader. Here. Chair Ludlow. Here. We're all here, and would everybody please rise and uh, as we do the Pledge of Allegiance. And we have a special presentation today, so I'd like to introduce uh, Sheriff Roberts, who will speak about Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Sheriff Roberts. Well, good morning, commissioners, and uh, I first want to just start off by saying thank you very much for uh, taking this uh, time today to uh, take a moment and recognize uh, National Law Enforcement Day, and in, in particularly recognizing just uh, an amazing individual and his uh, amazing wife. And seated to my left is uh, Tammy Coates, and off to her left is, uh, many of you know, is uh, Sergeant Damon Coates, who spent many years at the Sheriff's Office. And I guess the irony of this whole thing today and this recognition is, is actually tomorrow is the anniversary of the day when Damon was shot. Uh, just to bring you back to that point in time that uh, he was shot by a 15-year-old uh, when he responded to a domestic violence type situation with somebody with some mental health issues. Uh, as many of you know, Damon worked as our public information officer. Uh, he had a variety of roles from training. I actually had the great opportunity to work with him in narcotics. And I can just tell you that uh, wherever we were able to go working narcotics, Damon was always able to reach out and touch whether it was somebody, a drug trafficker, and be successful or successful in the a public information office or the training. He was just amazingly talented individual. Well, it's been 12 years since the shooting, and I can tell you he's uh, had some struggles along the way. Uh, he's had some setbacks. But the one thing that he's continually done is, is moved ahead and has been amazingly supported by his lovely wife. I wanted to tell you that uh, one of the things back uh, in 2007, we actually dedicated our marine boat, uh, the name after Damon Coates. We also dedicated a bench at our uh, north station, along with a uh, uh, planted other trees, uh, continually in remembrance of Damon's incredible work at the sheriff's office. And one of the things that touched me <coughs> way back when, when he actually came back to the sheriff's office in 2007, and that was really the first time back at the office since the shooting. Uh, and the media at that time talked to him, and one of the couple comments that he made that really have stuck with me is, he said, it's, it's a dangerous job, he said, of his service, but at the same time, there's a lot of honor. He also went on to really say that, talking about his life, is that I've been pretty much, had incredible goals thus far. It's a miracle I'm even here today, just sitting in the sunshine trying to remember those good times and letting go of the bad times. That's success. I have enough faith in God, and then I know he's carried me this far for a reason, and he's going to carry me a lot further. So i just an incredible individual and want to say thank you so much for your service. It has never been forgotten, and it never will. And uh, thank you, board, for taking a moment to recognize Damon and his family. Thank you, Sheriff Roberts, and uh, thank you, Damon, for coming. Uh, it's particularly uh, with a great deal of admiration and respect. We see that your wife is there for you and, uh, uh, and, and supporting you, and we certainly do as well. 
you are an inspiration to us, uh, specifically for your courage and valor when you were a police officer, but what you've gone through because of that service. You know, we, we're, we're recognizing Police Appreciation Day. What's always interesting to me is when people walk through an airport, it became <coughs> a, a real rage that you would see a, somebody serving in the military and you go up and say thank you to them. Yet how often do you see people doing that with police officers? They are the same line. We call it a thin blue line in police enforcement, but certainly it has to do with uh, those serving in harm's way. Can you imagine uh, leaving every day or your loved ones seeing you leave and not so sure that you're gonna show up at home alive? So um, we really do appreciate the work that you did and what our, what our sheriff's personnel and law enforcement personnel do, because it's not a career, it's, it's jo not a job, it's a calling. And they, they do it well. The, uh, tomorrow, Friday, marks the, um, the official day, and how ironic, like the sheriff says, that it matches the day of, of, your, of the tragedy of your shooting. But you know there are some ways that, that people can recognize the importance of our law enforcement personnel. Now we hear nationally, you know how you know cops in you know, those demonstrations and somehow that all police officers are bad. You know there are mistakes made in this field, ladies and gentlemen, and that there is nobody perfect. But overall, especially in this county, we have an outstanding personnel of law enforcement. We're very proud again of what the work they do. But share a story on Facebook or otherwise of some, a positive uh, an, uh, encounter that you've had with a police officer, how he's protected you, or how you particularly thought he or she did a great job in enforcement. Uh, send a note or a card to your local sheriff's precinct and or the sheriff's department uh, or your police department in your particular town. And uh, finally, tomorrow, it's a good time maybe to wear your blue outfit and let people know that you are supporting the work that these people do, the fine work and dangerous work that they do out there for us. So um, I would like to recognize Commissioner Savas. Yeah, well, I'm gonna kind of follow the chair's lead there. I just wanna just, uh, I don't know if uh, Damon rep remembers, but uh, years ago when he was uh, serving with the sheriff's office, uh, uh, he responded to one of my locations on McLaughlin Boulevard, where we were held up by a guy with his, who actually brought his four-year-old daughter and, and robbed us. And uh, Damon responded at the time and was able to apprehend the person in about 20 minutes uh, in, a, in a nearby apartment. But I, I, that's when I first met him, and I was so impressed with his professionalism and his service. I mean, it was a, a stellar, uh, a, a stellar uh, deputy, did a great job. And I just, uh, um, just admire that and, and um, remember the good service and work that he did through the community. So I know it, we were all touched by, uh, by this incident, and um, uh, just uh, great to see you again, Damon. You know, if you don't mind, we'll take the time. Why don't we have a little photo opportunity with Damon and his wife, and uh, we can get you a nice copy of same. So, Commissioner, if you'll go down, we'll have a quick picture. All right, back to the matters at hand, and those are, it is time for a um, citizen's communications. What's that? Presentation. Oh, excuse me. I got a presentation. This is why I told you, Mary runs this place. I'm just a figurehead. All right, so uh, the presentation. We will now have the selection of 
the Board of County Commissioners Vice Chair for 2015. I'll ask for a motion for the selection of Vice Chair for 2015. Mr. Chair, I nominate Jim Bernard for Vice Chair. All right. Is there a second? Okay, made, motion made by Commissioner Smith, seconded by Commissioner Schrader. Further discussion? One, one of the things that uh, I, I told Commission I advised them I'd like to do during my tenure of four years is to see every one of them serve as vice chair. As one, at one particular time here some months ago, some lady said, you are the leader, and in fact I am not. I'm only 20% of the vote, I preside over the meetings, but each person that's up here, believe me, is a leader, and they have great talents in that regard. So. It is nice to be able to lean on them as necessary as I don't make it to a meeting, which has been pretty rare, but it does happen and maybe it'll happen in the future. So are we ready for the, the poll? Mary. Commissioner Savas? Aye. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Bernard? I guess I'll abstain. Oh, come on. You can <laughs> vote for yourself. Chair <laughs> Ludlow. Aye. Passes 5-0. You're allowed. Okay, and now, unless Mary tells me otherwise, we are definitely going to citizens' communication, whereupon we will call uh, to forward Mr. Les Poole, Mr. Stephen Bates. Good morning, Les Poole. Obviously, I'm from Clackamas County. You know, Damon Coates was the officer that we all knew by name long before the incident and uh, I remember that day and uh, um, I, there's no words I have beyond that. Um, today I would like to just chat briefly about voting and when I was a little kid there was a song about being old enough to kill, but not for voting. And it was about sending people to Vietnam at 18 years of age, but they couldn't vote. And, you know, there you are, you're whatever, a 12, 10 year old kid. And it, it, when, when that changed and they okayed the vote for 18 year olds, um, it opened an opportunity for young people to get more involved. Um, on the downside of it, it seems like most of our young people only vote in what we call the big election. And, and turnout isn't what it could be in spite of the uh, specious claims about how vote by mail is working. Um, it, voting is, a, is truly our responsibility. And voting doesn't mean reading a Facebook post or listening to someone speak for 30 seconds in a soundbite about an issue, whether it's light rail or the street fee or whatever it may be, voting means getting informed and understanding w why you're voting and how important it is because in a way you're voting on money. The people you elect, some are gonna be more careful with money, some are not. So, you know, we just had an election. Um, I, I imagine soon we're going to see the street fee or some kind of a road maintenance fee on the ballot. And uh, there's a couple folks up here that I know wouldn't have dreamed of, of endorsing it or, or even discussing it unless there was going to be a vote. Uh, there's people in front of me that have worked real hard for us to get an opportunity to vote on major issues. Uh, frankly, I'm offended when someone says we elect people to, to do everything without a vote. Obviously, sometimes the public maybe gets too caught up in, in uh, wanting to vote on everything, but for the most part, we need to vote on major issues, especially when we're borrowing hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, they just filed a, uh, a petition, or, or they're working on a petition for a countywide vote for rail in Washington County, and of course it's based on the model that we instilled here uh, in 2012. So. Uh, with the opportunity to weigh in and vote on issues, it makes a dramatic difference on the outcome. Uh, the last example I'd like to share is the Gladstone Library. It was a $10 million poorly financed concept initially, and uh, the city got a little ripped apart over that. And in the end, the citizens took matters in their hands. The citizens got it on the ballot through an initiative process. And now we've reached a compromise. Now we're looking at a whole new location, a six and a half million dollar project instead of a $10 million fiasco. 
I can assure everyone in this room that when government, regardless of where it is or who it is, is promoting a project that's going to cost us a lot of money and involve a lot of borrowing, when they know we're going to vote on it, they're more careful with their pencil. And uh, hopefully as the street maintenance issue moves forward, uh, the county will study the ridiculous fiasco that's gone on in Portland. And by the way, now it looks like there finally will be a vote on that. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Mr. Bates. Chair Ludlow, commissioners, happy new year from the people in Boring. I'm Steve Bates. I'm sitting before you as the chair or the chief petitioner for the petition for withdrawal from the Metropolitan Service District on behalf of the community of Boring. Earlier today, I presented to your clerk to the board a certified copy of the 75 page document that will be presented to the Metro Council today. Uh, it will be the petition will be presented or delivered to the Metro Council today and the next Thursday I will be testifying in front of the Metro Council. But the reason for this petition is half of Boring <coughs> is within the jurisdictional boundaries of Metro and half of Boring is not. Uh, the people of Boring over the past two years have been doing research, having meetings, discussions, trying to figure out how to solve this problem because in the future this will be a problem. In the event of incorporation, the people of Boring will actually have two different communities. Two different comprehensive plans will have to be prepared. One that meets the metro code for the people who are in the metro boundaries, and another comprehensive plan that does not include the metro code for the people who are outside of the metro boundaries. Therefore, uh, we started circulating a petition after a vote was taken a year ago, January the 7th, 2014. 80% of the people voted in favor of a withdrawal petition. Over 20 volunteers circulated the petition, and we uh, are turning in a petition today that bears 697 signatures, which represents 30% of the registered voters in the withdrawal area. This petition was signed by Democrats. It was signed by Republicans, independents, and non-affiliates. This demonstrates the fact that this is a bipartisan measure. This is a community that wants to look to their future and plan for their future. We have established the fact that this is not a motion of a few, but the cause of many. This petition is submitted to right or wrong and create a sense of unity in the boring community for now and for the future. In addition, House Bill 2640 has been introduced at the state legislature. <coughs> this was sponsored by Bill Kenimer, and currently we have several legislators that have said that they support it. We are in, I'm in front of you today asking for your complete support of House Bill 2640, which basically changes the boundaries of Metro and relieves boring from the metro boundaries and it basically takes us out of the reach of metro. Therefore, I ask that you help us with it, the passage of House Bill 2640 and next Thursday, if any of you could, please come and testify with me in front of the Metro Council to ask for them to support House Bill 2640. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just guessing here, but I would guess that Les Poole supports this effort. Am I, am I right, Les? We, we have 639 allies there that signed that petition. <laughs> By the way, that's a vote, and we're looking forward to it. Commissioner Smith? Uh, a couple things. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd request that we discuss this issue at a, a policy session or under issues, wherever you think is appropriate, right. because obviously we're going to be asked by the legislature what accounting commissioners mm -hmm. think since we've been requested on that, and we can have a good discussion on that. Uh, Steve, a question to you. Why do you want to be uh, outside of Metro? It, essentially, the problem that we see in the future yeah. is half of us are in and half of us are out. And we so what burden does that bring to you in, that, in Boring? It mm -hmm. brings us a, a situation where there is unfair treatment. Some of the people are treated differently than others. Even Clackamas County came to a boring CPO meeting and said that they have to treat 
people within the metro boundaries differently than the people who are outside of the metro boundaries. In other words, part of boring is being treated differently just because of a boundary. Yeah, and are you referring to things like land use laws and siting of businesses yes. and Met metro private code, property yeah. rights? Mm -hmm. So if we could have some of those issues brought to our attention, because some of us may not know uh, intimately the issue like you do. So if we could have those in front of us, and I'm sure that's going to go to your testimony too in Salem. Thank you. Commissioner Schrader. Uh, so uh, I almost said Commissioner Kenimer because, as you know, I worked with him in that capacity as well. So he has sponsored the bill. Yes. And the bill is going to be dropped. Are there any other additional the, the, the bill is dropped. It is dropped it, it already. Is so we it's, have a House bill number. It, yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. Because yeah. what we have in front of us is the LC draft. So yes. Yeah. The, the, as I understand it, the House clerk has not released any of the bills yet for publication. That's, that's why I gave you the LC, because that's the only thing I have. Right. But I, I showed you the receipt and the House bill number. Are, are there any other legislators who are going to sign on at this point? Uh, Do you know? At this point, I have commitments from Mark Johnson. Okay. Uh, Representative... Uh, but Representative Mark Johnson, Senators Thompson and Olson. Good. Okay. Uh, Shamia Fagan, I've, I've met with her. She, mm -hmm. At this point in time, she's noncommittal. She wants to do some due diligence before she makes up her mind. Yeah. And I guess I see the issue with this in part of it in and part of it out, that assuming boring moves towards incorporating, which, is, which I think might be part of the issue, it would, it would complicate the matter of what your comprehensive plan would be for a city, because part of the city would be outside of Metro's jurisdiction, whereas part of it would be under the umbrella of Metro. And being under the umbrella of Metro has a whole other layer of, um, you know, regulations. Good, bad, or indifferent. It has a whole other uh, layer of requirements, including densities and um, that kind of thing. So that's what the complication is. And your preference, should you move forward with incorporation, which I personally think is a good idea, um, would, would give you a, a little more leeway from your perspective and autonomy in managing and coming up with a comprehensive plan. I mean, you'd still have to work with LCDC and... And, 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 and I actually, yeah, yeah if, if I may, Chair Ludlow, sure. I, I actually <clears throat> took the position that we would rather be under LCDC's jurisdiction than being half in and half out. We, yeah. uh, we want to be able to establish ourselves as a rural community just like Sandy and Estacada. They operate under the LCDC rules. Right. They, they do not have to answer to Metro. Yeah, They're, those outlying areas are out of, outside the jurisdiction. That's, uh, that's true. Commissioner Savas. So I was curious. I'm looking forward to reviewing the 75-page document. I've got a voracious appetite for information, as uh, some people know. Uh, <laughs> do you know if the line is the the line where the boundary is is consistent with the MPA? I I do not know that. I know that the line as it exists today is the old DEQ boundary. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Right. The uh, uh, you know, considering, I mean, we've talked about this for years, and um, and I think it's totally appropriate, and I personally will support it. I don't care about 75 pages. You can't have a town, an area, split in half like this. Um, you know, and some people talk about under the umbrella of Metro. I think it's more like under the hammer. Uh, you know. <laughs> I just use a I just use a softer terminology. That's all. <laughs> well, and some would say I don't, I don't agree with Metro. I agree they should haul garbage. I agree they should take care of our zoo. It's just the planning thing that bothers me a lot. And maybe uh, you know my suggestion would be to change where it says boring and just put Clackamas County for me. You know, but uh, I, uh, as Tootie suggested, we will uh, take this under advisement. You know, very often we don't take positions until we see the paper, the final paper, so to speak. And I think you were here on another matter where I reminded you that, you know, until we see the paper, we, we either will or won't uh, take a position on something. And if we will, who knows what we'll do. But to me, this has great legitimacy. You can't have a town like that, an area that's been existing for a long time, be split in half like this. Um, so I, I will be supporting that, and we will take this up at, um, with PGA, Public Government Affairs, and talk about its merits, and uh, I look forward to supporting it. Thank you very much. Thank you. And last and certainly never least, it would be Mr. Mack Woods.
Thank you, Chair Ludlow and Commissioners. I am MacArthur Woods, live out in the county in the area where one of the commissioners live. It's good to see she made it in through all that fog too, like myself. But I want to take this morning to say thank you big time for all the folks that hardly ever get any recognition. I'm referring to the folks that does the internet projects, the cameras. This word gets out to the public big time and it leaves no room for hearsay. It's coming from what is said right here in this office and things that are voted for by the different ones right here in this office. And it's becoming almost a problem for me because people come up to me in the store and they say, Mac Woods. I don't even know him, I never saw him before. They want to compliment some of the things that they see and hear about. And I say, well, thank you for the compliment, but that's so long ago I forgot about it. Go and clear back to when I got gaveled down. It's still on the internet. You can, I've sent out the uh, address for the folks that's doing this great job, and we all should take our hats off to them for the good job they're doing. Give them a pay raise, maybe. Thanks, Tootie. Yes, ma'am. She understands. But it does bog me down when I go to the store. All these people want to talk to you. And it's going to get better. Let me tell you, the word is getting out, not only in Clackamas County that you represent, but people are tuning into it. Yeah, Multnomah County, Marion County, all over. And we love it. And they certainly understand, as someone just mentioned this morning, I was in one in the Navy before I was old <laughs> enough to vote. And don't need to elaborate on that. But above all, for the job that they're doing, and boy, some of these things is a test of my memory. I don't know how one of the commissioners did it coming in through this fog this morning, but <laughs> it's a test of my memory. Her memory is better than mine to remember where all those chug holes are to be able to drive around them so you don't knock your car out of alignment. So uh, it's a challenge. But it, the heavy fog, I've seen it once this bad before. I saw across the road in front of me about six foot off the highway a salmon swum through in the fog. It's pretty thick. That's a little humor. You gotta have a little humor. We having fun, Mr. Chair Ludlow? Well, I'm not used to that from you, Mac, but go ahead. We like it a lot. <laughs> you gotta have a little fun. I'm having more fun. And it's gonna get better. Because I know something that a lot of other people don't know until later. Uh, but for Mr. Roberts, Craig Roberts, I, my hat's off to all of them. Remember back when they were cutting their expenses while they were putting their life on the line for us out in the public? Public got together and was able to get that changed around. They put their life on the line for us. We need to support the sheriff, his team, and all the officers. One just got shot again yesterday on the news in Salem. I heard about that. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Mac. Just for the record, um, so the, for those out there who have never met Mac Woods, and he, he quit showing up, he won't be accosted in the grocery store, for goodness sakes. But, <laughs> you know, for those of, who don't know this, I never have gaveled Mac Woods down. So no, you mentioned gavel previous. down, and man, it wasn't me, right? John, I'm sorry, don't take, I, it was a previous commission. Thank it's you. also a previous commission that we're cutting their m money, the Clackamas County Sheriff's oh, I just want to catch up with her. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mac. Yeah, anyway, uh, about the fog. Yeah, it yeah. was freezing fog at my house oh, this morning. It? Yes, I had a layer of ice over my car and almost slipped down the stairs, so I oh, creeped in this morning. But thank you for that reminder, Mr. Woods. I didn't mean to gavel you down, but I had to catch up with my predecessor here, you know. All right, that is the end of citizens' communication. We now have a public, re public hearing, Mr. Krupp. Yes, we do, and it, this public hearing involves the second reading of an ordinance that would modify the moratorium on medical marijuana dispensaries in Clackamas County. And I'm going to invite Mr. Dan Chandler to give a report <coughs> on this. Good morning, Commissioners. We're here uh, for second reading of Ordinance 01-2015, an ordinance which would partially lift the moratorium on medical marijuana dispensaries, which was imposed by the Commission in April of last year. 
the commission held first reading and a public hearing on December 11th, uh, 2014. At that hearing, uh, we heard from the commissioners there were two issues that were of concern. The first was uh, a limit on the hours of operation, and the second was the potential for a prohibition uh, against smoking on the premises. We've gone ahead and amended the ordinance to include those two changes. Hours of operation are proposed to be 10 to 8, and there will be a prohibition uh, against smoking on the premises, which, will, which would include employees who are the only ones allowed to smoke uh, today if they have medical marijuana cards. We did hear in the interim uh, from the operators of some of the dispensaries that they would prefer that the hours be 10 to 9. Uh, the rationale for that was that many of their customers work in retail facilities or other places where they don't get off work, um, and many of them come between the hours of 8. What, what did we have before? We have, we have 10 to 8 in the, in the current draft. There were, there were no hours at the first reading. Uh, we proposed 10 to 8 in the draft in front of you. One option would be uh, 10 to 9. That was the request of some of the dispensary operators. We would, however, have the option... Uh, of coming back and amending those or those hours when we go ahead and adopt the permanent time, place, and manner ordinance, which is in process right now. We've met with the work group uh, already this week. Commissioner Smith. So how does this delay, or if it does, what we're doing today with the passage, with this second reading of this? Because we wanted to get it done uh, so these people c could continue in the operation of their business. Uh, there, there would be no delay. If the, if the commission passes this ordinance today, it would be effective upon signature. Okay, and then when we do time, place, and manner, we can address uh, the 9 p.m. issue. Yeah. Correct. We could either do right? it now or we could do it. Well, if we do it we now, do it. will it delay it? No. Oh, okay. I think we have to take into consideration, too, uh, what's coming down the pike in regards to uh, what little control we might have on the time, place, and manner for recreational marijuana should be probably some <coughs> meshing of times there. Commissioner Bernard? Okay. Uh, that was my question. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, proceed. Or is that it for today? That concludes my staff report. All right. So, uh, okay, Commissioner Bernard. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm interested in changing the time <laughs> before we adopt it. So well, I mean... Why don't we go through the testimony, if you don't mind? And, oh, okay, and, sure. uh, We have public testimony, and there I'm sure there's going to be some yeah. repetitiousness about, uh, about that particular suggestion. So I will uh, open the public hearing, and I do have some blue cards here. And we'll put up uh, Mario Mamone. I, I know I get that wrong every time. I apologize. And Abigail Wells. Sure. Hello, Chair Ludlow and Commissioners. Good morning. Um, my name is Abigail Wells, and I'm here. Um, I'm the Vibrant Future Coalition Coordinator. And I'm also here representing Oregon City Together, and in particular, Elizabeth Russell, who could not be here today. Um, she's been working together with the Citizen Advisory Council and just had a few things that she wanted to make sure um, were represented here today. So the first was just how much she and the prevention community in general really appreciate um, the commissioners, how they responded to the community's request for the advisory council. Um, and that has given all of us a really good opportunity to build proactive relationships um, in order to protect our youth as we move forward with this. Um, we are in uncharted territory, and the more discussion and due diligence that we're able to give up front, the better. So that was one important thing, is just to, to thank everyone for the participation. Um, she also wanted to confirm that the place requirements now include substance abuse treatment centers, public parks, libraries, daycare centers, preschools, and pediatric clinics. Uh, let's have Mr. Chandler, can you verify that? Uh, all of those issues will be addressed when the county does the permanent time, place, and manner ordinance. So what this ordinance does is lifts the moratorium as to those facilities who obtained their licenses uh, from the OHA before the board imposed the moratorium. I would note that the discussions that we have had with the advisory group um, have included setbacks from all of those facilities, but this ordinance doesn't address those issues. Are you uh, aware of, of the particular ones that, that she mentioned? 
of the proximity of the, those four locations to any of those facilities? Or, or is the person testifying, Abigail, are you aware of, of a, uh, of a uh, encroachment upon that distance? Um, I'm, I'm not aware of it. All right, Commissioner Bernard. Oh, I, you know, because we're only looking at the four uh, who have already invested in the business, I'm comfortable with moving forward, but I, I think that in the next, uh, when we talk about uh, our ability in the future, um, I totally support uh, those restrictions, um, uh, daycare centers, and uh, specifically in schools. And frankly, I'd like to extend the distance. Um, and I, I'm, we've, I don't know what we've come up with, what that advisory group is looking at, but 1,000 feet uh, probably isn't sufficient, in my opinion, to a lot of these, but 1,500 might be more ade adequate. It also limits substantially the number of facilities that could exist in certain areas, which I think is important to sustaining uh, the investments that people have already made in their businesses. But I, I was listening today on the radio uh, about, um, I, I think it was one of the states, about selling buds or something. I'm not that familiar with the process, but selling buds in medical facilities versus recreational facilities. So uh, there's a lot to figure out, and we'll be working with the legislature uh, to make sure that some of our concerns that the committee has addressed um, will be part of the legislation that moves forward. Abigail, you still have time remaining, should you want to right, continue. I will use that time. Um, we also wanted just to mention that the Medical Marijuana Task Force is developing a marijuana retailer best practices, um, and we would hope that the county would strongly encourage retailers to adopt this. It includes things like um, parental advisories, um, suggestions of having consumer lock boxes on the present on the <coughs> premises um, having resources and referrals for substance abuse treatment in some of these uh, medical facilities as well as eventually recreational um, and education and reducing the access to youth so that is something that's being developed and we would strongly encourage them to at least look at and look over um, and then another thing was just again the hours of Operation, um, she said 10 to 8 seemed like a very reasonable compromise. Um, yeah, so that's that's the majority of the things I have here. So you will, and the advisory group, will continue their communication with Mr. Chandler on the suggestions. We want to make sure that they, they get to us, but the best way is through Mr. Chandler for this mm -hmm. subject. Agreed? Yes. Okay, great. great. Thank you. All right. Um, and yes, sir, you're next. Good morning, Chair. Ludlow, good morning, Chair um, Ludlow, excuse me, and, uh, yeah. and partners. Um, I want to just take this opportunity to thank you for all the thoughtful work that you've put into this process. It's been a long nine months, but in the end, I think it's been a, a productive work session. I think it's opened up doors of communications and doors of understanding that were closed. And I, I appreciate that the staff time that you put into this project. Uh, I've appreciated working with Mr. Chandler and Mr. McAllister, and they're just awesome people, very open and um, warm and welcoming. And so I really appreciate that. And Commissioner Bernard, I really appreciate you spearheading this and taking the time to really move forward in understanding the issue. And Commissioner Smith, even with your reluctance, and Commissioner Savas and your reluctance, I really appreciate your support of this issue. And I look forward to working with you through this until whatever end it may be. And thank you very much. And, and if I might add, uh, Abigail, I appreciate working with Elizabeth and with your group. And I think, again, we've opened up new doors of communication and understanding and that we can move forward with this. Thank you very much. Well, uh, Mario, they, uh, they say that attitude is not nothing. It's everything. And um, your demeanor throughout this has been much appreciated by me and I'm sure by the rest of the commission because we had some rather uh, interesting moments when we were considering this, and uh, I appreciate that now we're on a different uh, and level playing field and talking to each other, so I appreciate you coming here today. Thank you both. And last, and I'll again use that vernacular, not least, is Mr. Les Poole. Uh, 
thanks again for the opportunity to speak. I'll be brief. I do know how to do that. Um, 11 months ago or a year ago when this issue was before you, I challenged the county to take the lead and, and not wait until the, the one year moratorium ended. And, and you know, don't wait to see what other counties do. do just get involved. Let, let's get an answer for these folks. Um, I've got a friend that, that gets treatment with marijuana. I recall the lady that came in and testified. She um, had had has some pretty credible evidence that the use of the oil, she's not smoking it to get high, but the use of the oil has, has been a great health benefit. Um, marijuana is an organic substance. I, I'm not a doctor. I'm not here to get into the details, but it does appear that, that, that there is a place for it, a, a time, place, and manner. And I just want to thank the staff and the county for doing what you're doing so that there's some finality and, and that you're doing this and not waiting until after July when the so-called recreational marijuana becomes legal. So uh, thanks for everything you're doing and uh, hopefully this will move forward. I do want to just mention to the public, uh, you're probably all aware that the OLCC, which may become the OLC and M Commission, <laughs> Oregon Liquor and Marijuana Commission, um, will be putting out some statewide rules and I'm sure they're going to reflect what you're doing. So thank you again. Commissioner Smith. Uh, regarding the OLCC, they, you can go online and, and answer questions on their survey. They are actively seeking and very, want, very much want people and the communities all around Oregon to comment on what they think uh, should be allowed with recreational marijuana. I think that's really, really important. This is a really wonderful time to exercise your freedom of speech and your opinions on a very controversial topic. So I would encourage you to do that. Thank you, Mary. Hey, that was my line. I set this up, and that, this oh, is what I'm happens. Sorry. Yes, you have an opportunity, albeit a very short one, as you can see by this, uh, till January 12th, to opine about uh, various things in regards to the implementation of recreational marijuana and the use of same. Uh, there also will be a um, the, the growing across the state to hear from community members, parents, law enforcement, people who want to grow or sell it, and local governments. So uh, please go online uh, at marijuana.oregon.gov and take that brief um, survey. Come that here, was please. a very good idea you had, Mr. Chair. Sometimes I, I, I stumble on myself. Uh, Commissioner Bernard, thank you. Oh, I just want to make sure that, uh, that uh, we're, we're clear on, people are clear about my feelings on marijuana. I don't. I did not vote for legalization of marijuana, and and I wouldn't. Um, I'm in the public safety arena. There's a lot of things we don't know yet. Um, however, I do support uh, the opportunity for people to use uh, medical marijuana. My big concern is McLaughlin Boulevard. Driving that my entire life. Um, I'm concerned about how many marijuana places will exist. And, and frankly, I'm tired of depending on syntax to support everything we do, gambling, alcohol, t cigarettes, and next marijuana. And you, you hear about states that are le have legalized marijuana and the millions of dollars that have come into the state. Um, I'm very concerned about our dependence on syntax. Um, I think it's the responsibility of, of the citizens uh, in this country to find a better way. Um, I, I was actually appalled when liquor stores opened on Sundays. I, I don't know why, but I, I, I just, I'm very concerned about um, you know, the abuse. In marijuana yet, they, they, you know, I think Oregon's doing a better job thanks to the mistakes that other states have made um, on how we're going to regulate and how we're going to dispense dollars for um, rehabilitation uh, and protect uh, our families. But um, I'm, I'm, I, I'd also like to 
today, and that maybe that needs a form of a motion, change the hours from uh, 10 to... Yeah, uh, I was going to, well, first of all, let's do this. I'll close the public hearing. And um, if you'll note, uh, the first thing to do is uh, entertain a motion to read the ordinance by title only. I move we read the ordinance number 01-2015 by title only. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Bernard, seconded by Commissioner Schrader. Any further discussion? I'll ask the clerk to call the poll. Commissioner Bernard? Aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Commissioner Savas? Aye. Chair Ludlow? Aye. Passes 5-0. Now, if you'll bear with me, I think we should probably make the motion and then amend it um, with any changes that the commissioners would I like. I need to read it by title. I'm getting to that, but oh. I just wanted to get them, yeah. So I'll ask the clerk to read the ordinance by title only. Okay, this is ordinance number 01-2015, an ordinance amending chapter 6.12, medical marijuana facility moratorium of the Clackamas County Code and declaring an emergency. All right, I'll ask for a motion. So I'm a little confused. Don't we need to make the modification before we make the final motion? Well, you want to amend the motion so you can make the motion. Yeah. And well, I could can... make the motion amending it, and then we... After the motion's made. Uh, Nate well, and I have had that conversation before about what comes first, the chicken or the egg. So Mr. Madcore? I don't know if it matters. You have read it by title only. If you want changes to it, such as 8 to 9, that could be made now, and you could move that it be made, uh, uh, move that it be adopted as modified, or you could move and make an amendment to that motion as well. So it well, is I was a chicken or the egg type of thing. Be efficient here. <laughs> well, either way is okay. Uh, Commissioner Smith. You guys get tired of me saying this, but in the legislature, there are very specific rules on how to do this, as Martha knows. First, you amend it, you pass the amendments yes. to the bill. That's a separate vote. I'm not saying that you don't know what you're doing, but you're very good with this. And then you read the entire bill and you pass it as amended and using those words. Just thought I'd let you folks know. And that's well, was actually we can do it that way if that's the preference. And then after that's passed, somebody can still amend it after that. That's just the way things are. So if Mr. Commissioner Bernard, you would like to make a, a yes. motion to alter this, please do so. I move we amend the hours to, to 10 to 9 p.m., 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. I'll right. second that. Is there a second? Second? Okay. Commissioner Bernard with the motion, Commissioner Savas with the second. Further discussion on that amendment? I have a question. Certainly. Uh, that is, what is the uh, OLCC's hours with regard to liquor stores? We looked at that, Commissioner, and they vary from store to store around around the state. I believe... Uh, and the they have to be approved by the OLCC, so understand that an owner submits those hours and days that they wish to operate and must be approved by OLCC, but go ahead. Yeah, they, they vary from store to store. Um, some are open as late as 8, some 8.30, some 7.30. It, it varies around the, around the state, but generally from 10 or 11 in the morning till anywhere between 7.30 and 9 in the evening. The facilities who sell the products, I believe you can sell alcohol at a bar or restaurant from 11 a.m. to 2 a.m., so that's 15 hours. We're not going to do that here. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so the, there's been a motion. There's been a second. Further discussion on altering the hours to 10 to 9 instead of what we currently have is 10 to 8. Are we ready for the poll? Mary. Commissioner Bernard. Aye. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Chair Ludlow. Aye. Passes 5-0. And now, when you make the motion, you might also add as amended. So I'm looking for a motion. Jim. I move we adopt ordinance number 01-2015, modifying the moratorium on medical marijuana dispensaries in Clackamas County as amended and declaring an emergency. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Bernard, seconded by Commissioner Schrader. Further discussion? All right, Mary. Commissioner Bernard? Aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Commissioner Savas? Aye. Chair Ludlow? Aye. Passes 5-0. Uh, if you want me to run out and sign that right away now and get things going here. <laughs> so I, I, I have a question. Yes, Chair. yes, Commissioner Savage. So I was li listening intently to Commissioner Bernard's motion, and 
it differs with what the language is on the sheet. Oh, that was a typo. Oh, it was a typo. I just didn't okay. get down that far to scribble yours scrib out. She scribbled it out. Okay. So as you heard it is how it is, as amended, I might add, as Commissioner Bernard said. So that does pass five to zero. And now, the consent agenda. I'll ask the clerk to read the consent agenda by title. Okay, the consent agenda. Under Health, Housing, and Human Services, a board order for approval of mental health director's designee to authorize a custody hold under ORS 426-233. Approval of an intergovernmental sub-recipient agreement, amendment number one, with the City of Lake Oswego, Lake Oswego Adult Community Center to provide social services for Clackamas County residents. Under the Department of Transportation and Development, approval of a five-year Clackamas County Transportation Capital Improvement Program. Under elected officials, approval of previous business meeting minutes. And a resolution appointing a Justice of the Peace pro tempore for the Clackamas County Justice of the Peace District. And under technology, technology services, approval of an ORMAP intergovernmental agreement, contract number 3150, with Oregon Department of Revenue for digital GIS tax lot con conversion. And that concludes the consent agenda. And I also wanted to remind folks that they can read our packets and get all kinds of information on our website. That's a good one. Yeah, that's much uh, easier to navigate now. Yes. All right, I'll ask for a motion. I move we um, approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. All right, motion made by Commissioner Smith, seconded by Commissioner Bernard. Any further discussion? I'll ask the clerk to call the poll. Commissioner Savas? Aye. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Bernard? Aye. Chair Ludlow? Aye. Passes 5-0. And now the county administrator has not been able to give us an update for some time. And, and I know the, the viewing public out there has, has missed that greatly. So it's, you can tell us what you did over the holidays, Mr. Krupp. It's been a long drought, I know. So, <laughs> But uh, what, what I do have, I was going to uh, uh, follow up on uh, how we started the meeting with acknowledging our uh, county sheriff's office uh, and uh, recognizing National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day by simply sharing with you a number of uh, key accomplishments um, of our uh, Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. And uh, what I wanted to share with you is that um, they uh, invested volunteer time and effort uh, for the Deployed Veterans Drive campaign, uh, where volunteers packaged some 83 boxes of donated items for deployed members of the Guard and the Reserve. Uh, during the holidays, uh, our Sheriff's Office enhanced their uh, bike uh, patrol uh, to pro provide extra safety and security at the Clackamas Town Center. Uh, also during the holidays, uh, members of the CC CCSO staff participated in the annual um, Shop uh, with a Cop event, and that's where they uh, uh, work with young uh, children and helping them shop with gift cards at uh, lo local shopping uh, centers. Uh, in October, uh, the office launched the 12th National Family Violence Apprehension Detail, which includes uh, participation from some 220 sheriff's offices nationwide. And then also this fall, uh, the office hosted the annual search and rescue conference that provides critical training to volunteers, police officers, emergency responders, and medical personnel. And notably this last year, the sheriff's office gained uh, Oregon accreditation uh, recognizing the high standard of uh, professionalism of the agency. And then uh, finally, of course, as you know, as we were entering into the holidays, the staff participated in the No Shave November contest and raised some $6,000 um, to uh, raise awareness on men's health issues and to support the American Cancer Society. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, we sort of finish the day acknowledging these uh, many accomplishments on the part of the Sheriff's Office. I have one other item to share with you, though, too, and that, that is just to let you know that uh, during the holiday recess, I did sign two uh, contracts. Uh, one was a um, contract between the uh, Clackamas County Service District Number 1 and Paul Brothers Incorporated 
uh, to conduct uh, the uh, Kellogg Creek Water Pollution Control Plant landscaping project in the Milwaukee area. Uh, that was a contract of about $195,000. And then uh, I also approved a contract uh, with Managing for Results. It's a software con uh, contract. And this is uh, to be able to put on the web um, the dashboard that will be um, uh, sh showing to the public as to how we're making progress on our strategic plan. So uh, that contract uh, w was put together, uh, executed for a multi-year period. It's a uh, total cost of $164,000 for the total contract. Looking forward to getting uh, that uh, effort up and running on the web. Uh, and of course, later on this month, uh, commissioners will be hearing uh, a report from county staff and departments about how we're, well we're doing in meeting our goals in our strategic plan. That's my report. Thank you. We, we all noted that you didn't participate in the uh, in beard grow during that 30-day period, Mr. Cup. Uh, you know, I, I didn't, um, and, and there's a genuine reason for that. Um, Mama says no? No, no the, uh, the, the reason is, is my beard um, is white. It's completely gray. <laughs> so, so the last time I grew a beard, um, my wife, and this, this, it's been that way for quite some time. My wife said to me, don't ever do that again. There you go. I told you. So. <laughs> it's, that oh, will certainly do it. It is time for um, communications from the commissioners, and I'll start with Commissioner Schrader. Well, it's Happy New Year, everyone, and uh, it's good to be back starting a, a fresh new year uh, with my colleagues, and uh, we all had the opportunity to see Commissioner Bernard and Commissioner Savas sworn in again uh, on the 5th, and um, I'm really looking forward this year, frankly, working, working as a team. I think we all enjoy each other's company. Um, we have this thing about uh, U of O and the Ducks, thing going on, which <laughs> which I promise the next uh, public photo I will send with my dogs, they will be dressed as ducks for everyone to see. So, so we can call the Oregonian and let them have that photograph. Um, the, the other... Will all their digits be in alignment? Yes, they will. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, we also had an opportunity, all of us, to go to the Oregon Business Plan um, leadership meeting this past week. And um, I was pleasantly surprised surprised as I think my colleagues were that there was a lot of emphasis on our rural economy and as many people know we do have a large uh, rural economy in this county and in particular uh, Commissioner uh, Smith and I have an interest in uh, managing our, our timber uh, resources well so we can actually get uh, income from that so I'm looking forward in the year 2015 to be working on those issues, and one of the um, one of the publications that they had at that meeting was Oregon's Agricultural Progress. So I would recommend anybody who's interested in rural economies and agriculture. This is put out by the Oregon State University Extensive uh, Extension Service, and it has um, just absolutely uh, great information. Other than that, I, my personal goals of, of the year is to work with Commissioner Bar, uh, Bernard on renewing our Veterans Covenant. Um, working with our ag investment plan to get uh, in timber management, uh, working for business expansion and development, trying to get our ag investment plan uh, not only on the state but uh, in the national limelight as a way to re reinvigorate rural economies. Um, working with, with uh, public-private partners uh, because we're going to have this huge discussion this year on an urban growth boundary expansion. And uh, those always get kind of controversial and contentious, but uh, I think that we will work that through. And uh, hopefully um, this commission will be having a significant number of work sessions on that particular issue. Um, I'm committed to reconnecting with our cities and their leadership to continue to work for the prosperity of our citizens, as well as our CPOs, community planning organizations, and hamlets and villages. Um, I also continue to work for workforce, and that is training for displaced workers, for our youth, and working with our businesses to find out what they need to get people skilled up to have good family wage jobs uh, by serving on our workforce board. Um, and also, I do believe that arts and culture and heritage is a big issue here in our community, and I, I will put libraries under that umbrella too. So. Uh, I know that we have a lot of active people with Willamette Falls and the history, 
and the vitality and the tourism of this county. So that'll be another goal to work with. And finally, my personal goal is to see the new year with a new, healthy, happy, uh, new baby granddaughter. Uh, because as many of you know, it got a little bit um, got a little bit complicated there for a while. But and I, I did have to visit my daughter while she was in the hospital and take care of her toddler. And uh, so far, so good. It looks like things are going to go well. And um, I can't wait to show my commission colleagues picture of the new baby in March. So there we go. Uh, new chunky monkey yet, huh? Chunky monkey. All right. Thank you, uh, uh, Commissioner Savas. Well, as uh, Commissioner Schrader uh, mentioned, uh, myself and Commissioner Berard got sworn in on Monday, and uh, looking forward to a, um, a productive four years going moving forward. Uh, I want to thank my colleagues for uh, work earlier in 2014 on establishing the board goals. That's really been, uh, for me, something that has um, not only set a vision in place, but um, hopefully a lot of the machinery, if you will, moving, moving in the direction of those board goals. And it's my hope that uh, we can, um, with a lot of teamwork, both on the board level and at the staff level, work in... Um, in alignment with what those goals are as we're are accomplishing those goals. Um, uh, at the uh, Association of Oregon Counties uh, uh, annual conference in November, I moved forward uh, uh, a resolution to uh, uh, basically ask the governor the governor's office to uh, reinstate the Oregon state benchmarks. Um, that's, that's really, really the same thing. It's uh, how do you accomplish your goals and the metrics of measuring those goals. And as we roll out our strategic plan, which will take about a couple of years to uh, develop, uh, three perhaps, um, those are all part. Those are part of the. Those are the components of a strategic plan. But we, you know, we have to, uh, as the board, have to make sure that what we do, what we say, and how we do what we do, accomplishes those goals. And I think that's the most crucial part. So, uh, why we all agree about what we want to have happen, I think our difficulty has been on how we get it done or the how. And uh, so I, I, uh, I look forward to that, and I will um, be kind of uh, persistent as I've, you know, or nagging as uh, I kind of stated at my, uh, as my swearing in uh, on making sure we actually get there. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Smith. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I had a wonderful holidays uh, with family. We took, uh, I took two weeks off and turned off my emails and the news, and I came back energized, and it does work, and I'm thankful for that opportunity to be able to spend some time at the beach with friends and family and enjoy our holidays with family. And today I have more relatives flying in from Costa Rica to celebrate the holidays, and a sister-in-law flying in from Boston. So I get to do it again Boy. and cook more. And so... <laughs> more brittle. Yeah. More brittle, yeah, well thank you. I look forward to the new year. Um, you know, this board has been working on a lot of projects and we oftentimes we don't get an opportunity to talk about them because they're in the making, uh, but things are happening in Clackamas County and you're gonna see that. Uh, the Willamette Falls lock situation, uh, we're gonna head up a task force on that and I look forward to, to working with a lot of our stakeholders and partners and citizens in the county and elsewhere who want to see the locks reopened, and that, that's a priority for me. Also, the Blue Heron uh, Mill project at Willamette Falls, the developer signed an agreement to allow for the development of public access to the falls, and that'll be the first time in the history of Oregon that has ever happened. That is a big, big deal. Metro, uh, say what you will about them, is going to take on that project and try to find funding for it. So. At least that's one good thing we can uh, do with Metro. And uh, several months ago, they passed a, a new tax for parks. So maybe some of that tax that you're paying on will go locally to help uh, the park in uh, at the falls. We did have an, uh, a swearing in, not only with my two fellow commissioners, but with our county treasurer, um, Sherry Anderson, and our county clerk, Sherry Hall. It was a very nice presentation. Uh, Judge, presiding Judge Herndon uh, did the uh, swearing in, if that's what you want to call it. And uh, that was really nice. It was well attended by many people and friends from the county and, and families. And uh, I just look forward to uh, moving this county ahead with our 
uh, goals in our strategic plan. We are very deliberate and serious about that plan, and we have staff working on it diligently. They've really uh, stepped up to the plate and have been very receptive, and, and I appreciate the, the attitudes and the willingness of our employees to do that. Thank you. And now our senior commissioner, Mr. Commissioner Bernard. Um, again, we were sworn in, whatever day that was. Um, and, um, you know, the thing I'm looking forward to is uh, after six years, this is, is the best budget we've had that I've been able to work on. I look forward to, you know, in looking at various programs that we invest in and enhancing those investments. I also hope that we can put a couple million towards roads with the price of oil down. Uh, there will be no better opportunity. So we'll be talking about those during the budget process. Um, you know, I, one, one statement that was made today is that uh, we cut the sheriff. Uh, we've never cut the sheriff. In the six years I've been here, we've never cut the sheriff. Uh, we've always been very supportive of the sheriff. Um, so I, I look forward again, like I said, one of my, uh, my uh, greatest priorities is public safety. Uh, so we can plan on doing that. So yesterday I attended a safety culture meeting, which is hosted by Safe Communities Program, and an opportunity to look at the FARO unit, which is an accident reconstruction unit yeah, that this. they set on the corner, what used to take four hours, takes uh, you know 45 minutes, and it does a, a 3D image and puts photos on them, and they can reconstruct an accident. Uh, it's a it's a fairly expensive unit, but it saves many hours of traffic jams, and and uh, they use they use it mostly on um, you know uh, accidents where someone is killed or injured. And uh, they are talking about all the various other things that can, uh, it could be used for. For example, in the room, in, in, let's say there's a murder or something, they can just set it down and it'll scan the whole area and take pictures. And oftentimes when you have a crime scene, you might just go in and take a look and you might miss something. But this unit, they can actually study everything. It did put more hair on me when it, yeah, was, three when it scanned me. <laughs> um, I'm going to also attend the OFA uh, Fair Conference. Uh, that's the Oregon Fair Association Conference um, tomorrow and part of Saturday, yeah, as well as uh, in the morning I'm going to a public safety conference in Portland. Uh, the Business Leadership Conference, I tell you, I just, I cheered and whistled when I-205 was mentioned. It was thrilling to go from nothing to actually a legislator specifically identifying I-205. So that was really, really exciting. And finally, um, Damon Coates, you know, um, Public safety has been a priority for me, and, and perhaps the reason it's a priority is that, uh, you know, once you're elected, things change. Mm. The way you see things. You know, when you're not, you worry about your parents and your family and friends. But when you're elected, one of my biggest fears, and continues to be my biggest fear after uh, 12 years in politics, is that, um, one of your officers would be killed, and uh, or a board member, or a citizen, and that's that's a, a, a you know something that really concerns me, and that's why I've always thought that support of our public safety personnel is it should be a priority and has been a priority for all of us. Um, so um, I look forward to uh, another uh, four years working with the citizens of Clackamas County, and I really look forward to how we're going to deal with uh, the marijuana, legalization of marijuana. And like I said, I, I didn't vote for it, but the citizens did, so I'll be working hard to make sure that we protect uh, or support the decision in the citizens, but I'm also going to try and work really hard to make sure that we do it the best we can. Thank, Thank you. you.
Yes, I think we've mentioned all of our preferences here before. I, I did not vote for it either, but it is the law of the land. And, I, and my biggest concern always has been how that affects juveniles. I was watching a show the other day, uh, and it had to do with Colorado and the net effect of selling marijuana there, that the bordering states, all of them, that border Colorado, have now seen a great uptick in marijuana citations, arrests, problems. So that's interesting as it comes down. Like Jim said, you know, we've got a lot of figuring out here yet to do based on that. Uh, yes, the Monday swearing in, and uh, we had, we, on Tuesday, normally we have study and, and work sessions policy sessions, but we uh, all went to the Oregon Business Plan and Leadership Summit. It was a veritable who's who of anybody in Oregon. There, there are certainly legislators there, people from Metro. And like Jim said, it was uh, quite a thrill to see Representative John Davis. Because, um, uh, you know, we've been on this. This isn't just this commission. The previous commissions also have said 205 is a problem. And it's, as Jim has, Bernard has always said, it's a regional, statewide problem. It's not Clackamas County's problem. And now, uh, regardless of what uh, individual counselors from Metro may think, and one of them wrote a letter about my comment about 205 here uh, a week ago, that it is nice to see it come to the forefront and uh, really be a, showcased as the, one of the regional problems in this area. Um, uh, something very wonderful happened over the holiday weekend, which Mr. Krupp um, uh, you know, didn't necessarily look for commissioners, nor did he need them to accept the following. ODOT contacted the county and said, and, and you know, we've all known that the sunrise fa phase one goes to 122nd, and it was only going to be one lane in each direction. Now, anybody of this correct thinking was thinking, well, let's see, from 205 into a heavy industrial, er industrial area or from the expressway in a heavy industrial area, you're going to see a long line, of, a stretch of trucks. So ODOT contacted the county while we were all uh, on recess and said, you know, would you like to have two lanes in each direction? Well, Don quickly took care of that business. Yeah, uh, well, I'm not sure. No, he said, yeah, we'll take that. That's, that's incredible. So it, it is very advantageous for this county that once it came down the pike as to how much money was going to be there for this, that there was still enough to do the Tolbert overpass and now two lanes in, in, in each direction on the sunrise to 122nd, an incredible uh, uh, gift to the county in a lot of ways. So kudos to ODOT and kudos to our management staff who is working on that sunrise phase one. Um, I might also notice that it is now official, the $5 million which the governor and legislature dangled in front of Oregon City Metro and us uh, to uh, put towards the Blue Heron Oregon City project is now officially going to be given over to them because Metro, and it was quite surprising, regardless of what people think, Metro is very good in a lot of ways on some things. But on this particular one, to, uh, to uh, be able to get a, a free easement to that much property, valuable property, on the Malama River was really a coup. And its value it far exceeds, in my opinion, that $5 million that was needed in a matching way to match the $5 million that the governor is willing to give. So that money is coming forward. We will be back lobbying this spring in, in uh, Washington, D.C., as we did last year for this Blue Heron project. And considering that we now have made a huge step forward, I anticipate that the EPA and others, as we've been told, may be very interested in helping out uh, to really revitalize this particular area and make it a job producer and a magnet for tourism here in Oregon. So that's about what I have, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you uh, being here today. And uh, just a reminder again that tomorrow, if you can wear blue, say something nice about a cop, or even like I say, it is great to, and I, and I often do this with veterans, anybody who's you know been in the military, let alone wearing the uniform out there, is to thank them for their service. Try that tomorrow. And in fact, for the coming week, to, to go out of your way to talk to a cop. They're very approachable uh, and certainly appreciate, I'm sure, any positive comments you might give them. Ladies and gentlemen, there being no further business before the Clackamas County Commission this day, this meeting is adjourned.